Land Down Under is an incredible vacation, and I'm gonna show you some of the great things to see and do. Today with my friend Winnie the Wombat in Australia. Say hi, Winnie. Welcome to Laura McKenzie's Traveler. G'day mate, I'm Laura McKenzie and welcome to the land down under. This is such an amazing place to visit. Today we're gonna see Sydney. I'm gonna show you a little bit of Australia. I'm gonna show you why it's now one of the hottest destinations in the world. Then we're gonna luxuriate on the beach in surfer's paradise on Australia's Gold Coast. We'll discover some incredible sights and activities, including some you've probably never heard of. We're even gonna climb to the top of the Sydney Harbor Bridge. Now that's an adventure. So if you're ready, let's see the land down under. Australia is a vacationer's paradise with an abundance of recreational activities and cultural attractions. And nowhere is that more evident than in one of my favorite cities in the world, Sydney. From the rough and ready energy of its friendly, open-minded people to its sun-drenched natural attractions, Sydney will win the heart of even the most road-weary traveler. Hey, anybody call a taxi? Water taxis will take you anywhere you want to go, as long as it's on the coast. Hmm, let me see. The aquarium sounds nice. Thank you. Let's go see the aquarium. Sydney Aquarium is the largest aquarium in the Southern Hemisphere and houses the world's largest collection of Australian aquatic life. This place is huge, with a main exhibit hall and three floating oceanariums, which total about a mile of underwater tunnels to allow visitors to come face to face with some of Australia's fascinating marine life. Hello, big fella. Look at those teeth. Another great Sydney attraction is the Taronga Zoo. Taronga is an aboriginal word meaning water view, and the Taronga Zoo certainly has one of the best water views in the world. Built in 1916, it's open every day, and one tip, don't tell the kids it's educational. This is Gundy. Gundy's a male. He's a bit bigger than the females, as you can see, and he's sleeping, which is what koalas love to do. Mm. They sleep 18 to 20 hours every day. So they don't do too much, eat and sleep. What do they eat? Well, they eat what you see here around us is the eucalyptus leaves. And as you can see, they don't actually eat all the leaves that you see on the tree. Now have a look just above his head here. He's eating all he wants off here. He just eats the lovely tips, the new shoots on the ends, and he leaves all the other older leaves. Some of the other Australians you'll meet are dingoes, kangaroos, more koalas, echidnas, and emus. And of course, there's a lot more to see and do in Sydney, but my favorite has to be the legendary and controversial Sydney Opera House. Legendary for its architectural and cultural significance, and controversial for its overinflated cost, which nearly bankrupted the local government. The Sydney Opera House remains one of the greatest and most recognized buildings in the world. It cost 102 million Australian dollars and was paid for by a series of lotteries. The first concert at the Opera House itself took place during its construction when American Paul Robeson sang to the building workers at a lunchtime concert. The Opera House has performances nearly every day and is open for tours as well. Here's a tip. Remember that the seasons are reversed in Australia so their hot summer is from December through February. Laura McKenzie's Traveler will be right back. Welcome back, and for more information on Australia, visit us on the web at lauramackenzietv.com. The other icon in the harbor is the Sydney Harbor Bridge. Did you know that it takes 10 years to give the Sydney Harbor Bridge a new coat of paint? Well, I found out it takes just three hours to climb it. Ready.
when there's nowhere to go but up, it invariably means starting at the bottom. That means in order to climb the arch of the bridge, you gotta get up to it. I'd have to say the hardest part of the climb is all the stairs. I'm not winded yet. Still more stairs, but once you reach the top, wow. This is great. It's a good idea to practice using your safety latch before you head across the arch. That's it. Oh, Sticky. Great. I got the touch. Got it. OK. We're ready to go. Once you're actually on the arch, you just won't believe the view. Welcome to the top of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. We're 134 metres, or 438 feet, or four and a half seconds above the water. Well done. Lots of celebrities have done the climb as well. Will Smith, Jodie Foster, Matt Damon, Laura McKenzie. Nicole Kidman, she's climbed. Famous or not, climbing the Sydney Harbour Bridge is an exciting adventure you'll never forget. Amazing, I walked across the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Okay, for some Sydney sights that are a little more down to earth, you gotta head to the Queen Victoria Building. And for my favorite vacation pastime, shopping. I'm looking for the Queen Victoria Building. I think it's right down here. Wait till you see it. Here it is, the Queen Victoria Building. Come on. The Queen Victoria Building on the corner of Market and George Streets is one of the prettiest shopping arcades in the world. It hosts over 200 boutiques, most specializing in men and women's fashion. The stores keep regular business hours, but the arcade itself is open 24 hours, and you just gotta see their famous hanging clocks. The newest clock is also the world's largest. A hanging animated clock with 28 timepieces and a 22 karat gold dome. It tells the story of Australia's history from both the Aboriginal and the colonial perspective. And in just a couple of seconds, we're going to see the show. The royal clock was made in England and features the Westminster chimes, the face of Big Ben, and pomp and circumstance, the music played at Queen Victoria's coronation. Okay, this is the royal clock, and this one tells about British history. Every hour, we hear the trumpets, and we see the show. Another Aussie oddity is the didgeridoo. Hard to pronounce, I found out that didgeridoo is even harder to play. You put your lips inside and do a very simple vibration, which is... <laughs> That's what you have to do. Okay. That's right. You put your lips inside and then you blow, but when you blow, you have to feel the air coming out of your, from your stomach. Okay, push with the blow. diaphragm. So. It's your first sound, just blowing try. the air. <clears throat> <laughs> That's very tight. You would be a perfect trumpet player. Okay. It has to be very soft. Loose. It doesn't sound loose. Okay. Looser. You had it there for a second. I feel, I feel faint. <laughs> don't, don't fall. Possibly the world's oldest musical instrument, the didgeridoo is a wind instrument made from eucalyptus limbs that have been naturally hollowed out by termites. How do you change tones, or does it change tones? You use tones? your tongue, you use your voice. So, so wait a minute, show me first. Well, I can't, use, I can't show you movement of my tongue. OK. You have to go up and down, up and down, so. Producing a low pitch resonant sound, they say that the didgeridoo is the sound of Australia. And if the earth had a voice, it would be the sound of the didgeridoo. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you. I have to go sit down. 
<laughs> While I catch my breath, let's jet off to another part of Australia whose natural beauty and boundless energy will leave you breathless as well. If you like sun, surf and sand, fresh air and a carefree lifestyle, then you're going to love the Gold Coast of Australia. Welcome to the Gold Coast. The high-rise apartment buildings that line the main town of Surfer's Paradise may remind you of Miami Beach, but the spirit here is pure Aussie. Recreation and ingenuity go hand in hand here, and fun in the sun is what it's all about. The water here in Surfer's Paradise is the main attraction, and with miles and miles of glittering sandy beaches and sparkling crystal clear water, you have to factor in plenty of beach time. Incredible! Look at those waves! Ah! I want to be in the water! You guys go ahead. I gotta go change. Getting a little warm on the beach? Well, there's only one way to cool off. Get out and hit the waves. And there's no shortage of ways to indulge your cravings to get wet and wild. Well, Clinton, I guess being here on the Gold Coast means getting out on the water, and I'm in for a little bit of speed. So what can you do for us today? Uh, we can do speedboat rides, Laura. We can do jet skis. And we can also do parasailing. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. This is a little speedboat. You can take me on a quick tour down the coast, right? Yep, sure right. can. Oh, the water is so warm. What can I say? I just got the need for speed. Well, it was fun. Quite refreshing. Thank you. Thank you. Lost my scarf, but you know, that's half the fun. <laughs> Thanks, Clint. Speed boats are great, but this is called Surfer's Paradise after all, so let's scope out some surfers, dude. From the bodacious to the bogus, the glassy to the gnarly, the righteous to the radical, the waves here on the Gold Coast were custom made for surfing. Yeah, you got your big kahuna and your junior hot doggers riding the most awesome waves in Australia, and they are stoked. Here's a tip, the Coolangatta Airport is closer to the Gold Coast than the Brisbane Airport with non-stop flights from Sydney. Laura McKenzie's Traveler will be right back. Welcome back, and for more information on Australia, visit us on the web at lauramackenzietv.com. Not really into surfing? Okay, how about soaring? Across the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's a bird. No, I'm pretty sure it's a plane. It is a plane. A World War II biplane to be exact. How cool is that? The Tiger Moth is a legendary biplane. It was built primarily as a trainer for uh, RAF pilots or um, Air Force pilots, if you like, so that um, the people, for example, the English pilots who flew in the Battle of Britain would have learnt to fly in this these exact types of aircraft. Now, what are they made of? It seems like there's a fabric covering on the outside. Uh-huh, that worries people a little bit sometimes. It's a lightweight material. It's just a doping fabric, um, just like a model aeroplane. It's over, uh, mostly wooden, just to keep the aeroplane very light. Did he just say model aeroplane? He wants me to go up in a model aeroplane? Jeff assured me his planes were safe. The best thing about a Tiger Moth is it's, um, it's been flying for so long and it's a simple, reliable aircraft. It was actually designed so that it could fly long distances without, without the pilot really having to be a mechanic. So these Tiger Moths have flown from England to Australia and back. Now, the pilot sits in the back seat, is that right? Yes, I'm a back seat driver. We sit in the back, the passenger's in the front. They get uh, a great view of um, where we fly on the fabulous Gold Coast. You do acrobatics as well. Tell me exactly what you do. Okay, well the Tiger Moth we feel is the, one of the purest forms of flying. It's a very old style way of flying. You can do fully do all aerobatic maneuvers, which is loops, barrel rolls, spins, stalls, wing overs. It's great for getting the girls screaming. The highest roller coaster ride you could imagine. We call it the highest thrill ride on the Gold Coast. Well, I'm all about thrill rides, so let's check it out. Even though each plane can only take one passenger, they have two planes, so you and a friend can both go up in the air and take pictures of each other, or pretend you're dogfighting. 
I'll get you, Red Baron. <laughs> this is the ultimate thrill ride. But I want more. 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 Hey, can you drop me off at Dream World? I'm in the mood for a little loopity loop myself now. Recognized as Australia's premier theme park, Dream World has been dedicated to the happiness of all people since 1981, attracting over a million guests each year. With 10 different themed worlds, Dream World has a little bit of everything, and it's a great place for the entire family. There's Tiger Island, with the most ferocious cats on Earth. Nick Central. Koala Country, where you can get your picture taken with a cute and cuddly koala bear. So you can come in here, hold a koala, get your picture taken. It's so great. This is what Australia is all about, isn't it? Blue Lagoon. This is another little bit of Australiana. This is a gala. Hiya, sweetie. Gala, gala. Rocky Hollow and the Oakey Creek Sheep Shearing Show, starring yours truly, for about a minute. How you doing there, sweetie? You hanging in there, huh? Gumtree Gully. This is great. And my favorite, the Australian Wildlife Experience. This is a Crocodilus porosus. That means big, mean monster with massive teeth. Okay, enough kangas and tigers and koala bears. Oh my, I came here for a wild ride. She's my roller coaster buddy, though. We love them. Here goes. Yeehaw! Here's a tip. If you change planes in Sydney to get to the Gold Coast, find out if you have to change airline terminals so you can allow extra time. Laura McKenzie's Traveler will be right back. Welcome back. And for more information on Australia, visit us on the web at lauramackenzietv.com. I'm going to do something I've always wanted to do, because I was born to be wild. Just don't tell my mom. Tell me where we're going to go and what we're going to see. Well, today, Laura, we're going to take a nice little ride up to Binnaburra through the Numanbar State Forest and the Lamington National Park. And uh, when we get to the top, you'll have some beautiful views right out over the valleys and back towards the Gold Coast. I have a confession to make. My mommy told me never to get on a motorcycle with a boy. <laughs> so this is my first trip on a Harley. Now, why do you, wear, why do you have to wear leather in 90 degree oh, look, heat? It's all part of the mystique, isn't it? They provide you with a leather jacket and a helmet, so you're not only safe, but you'll look the part as well. I feel like I'm in a tunnel. You sit. I'm set. Let's go. Sorry, Mom. Woohoo! What a great way to see the Gold Coast. Okay, it's official. I'm a biker chick. Uh oh, I think I just ate a bug. I'm joking. These tours are great. They think of everything. All you have to do is show up. Oh yeah, and bring a camera. This is the beginning of the Queensland rainforest. And the views up here are gorgeous. It's hard to believe I'm in the same state. Wow, the Gold Coast is so great. You can be on the beach one minute and then up in the rainforest in less than an hour. Home to wallabies and wombats and kangaroos and koalas out in the wild, as well as an incredible variety of birds. Could you imagine being up there in the treetops getting a really close look at them? Well, here you can. Those who dare head for the Flying Fox, a wild ride through the trees that's guaranteed to give you quite a rush. My little heart's just pounding. It's just like a bungee jump. Here we go. Here we go.
Okay, how do you stop this thing? I'm gonna miss my flight. Anyone? Hello? See you back on the beach. Woohoo! So, on the Laura McKenzie scale of 1 to 10, I'd give Sydney and the Gold Coast a 10 for hotels, 8 for food, 7 for shopping, 8 for getting around, and 8 for sports and activities. Would I go back? I could live there. What a fantastic view. Look at those waves. You can see why they call it surface paradise. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing some of Australia with me and that you'll join me again next time from another terrific destination somewhere else around the world. From the Gold Coast of Australia, I'm Laura McKenzie. Bye-bye.